So it looks like the Tyranid leaks are getting going in earnest now. We've got a bunch of new data sheets revealed. Let's talk about more changes to the Tyranid warriors, gargoyles as troops, and a fun new ability called Swarming Masses. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're taking another look at some rules from the new Tyranids, three new data sheets revealed, and one special rule. I'm not exactly sure where they were originally posted, but as best I can tell, the first place I could see was the post up to Reddit around about a day ago, and I'm not sure if there's any more details as to what exactly the source of these datasheets is. Just from looking at them though, it does very much appear to be a digital version of the codex. To me, they look just about the exact same as the ones that we got from the Eldar Playtester codex, when we were getting all the masses of datasheets coming out of that. As such, I guess we can't be 100% sure that they aren't just draft rules and there won't be a few revisions before the actual codex release, but at least where the Eldari ones were concerned, there was kind of little to nothing that changed between these unofficial leaks and Games Workshop actually releasing the codex, so my instincts are that these are pretty likely to be fully legit. It does make me wonder whether or not it is just the same playtesters leaking another set of rules, or whether this is in any way partly sanctioned by Games Workshop. It's interesting that the three datasheets they've released are basically the same ones that have already had their rules revealed in packaging, at least in part. So whether it is the playtesters or Games Workshop being selective about things, they're clearly only showing us things that we've already got fairly good ideas of already. In any case, the leak comprises of one special rule, and the Gargoyles, Warriors and Tyranid Prime datasheets, and even though we did already know their stat lines and weapon profiles from those packaging leaks, there's still a fair amount of juicy stuff. First up, out of the three, I think perhaps the most interesting one for me is the Gargoyles datasheet. Really quite a simple one perhaps, but with two really quite big changes. The first and most major one in my opinion is that they're now troops. This was something that had been rumoured by a fair few of those previous Tyranid leaks that we had, but I must admit I am kind of surprised at this one. Giving objective secured units the ability to move 12 inches and just to be able to spam quite a lot of them is really powerful. With obsec gargoyles, it looks like it'd just be super easy just to repeatedly flip the middle objectives, even if the broods died each turn. I think I was perhaps more expecting them to say you can fill gargoyles as troops if you have a winged hive tyrant along or something, but it does appear that they're just troops outright. Perhaps this was an idea to rebalance the troop slot a little, seeing as both rippers and gene stealers are rumoured to be moving away to different slots. They'll be competing directly against termagants now, for whether or not the extra points is going to be worth the extra mobility that they gain. In general, it does seem like good news for gargoyles though. I think getting objective secured and being troops is almost always going to be an advantage. Secondly, and I think perhaps because of the obsec troops thing, they have lost deep strike. Unless there's some other stratagem or special rule that allow them to swoop down, they're not going to be able to do that just at base off their data sheet anymore. So that would hurt them a little bit, not being able to just swoop down and do actions and things, and then fly off and potentially go and go up the enemy's home field objective. There's that new profile for the flesh borer, apparently confirmed on this. Strength 5, AP-1 and damage 1, a boosted range to 18 inches, and generally just punching very very hard for the most basic Tyranid small arms. There doesn't appear to be on this datasheet any real indication that this is going to be locked to gargoyles, so it does look like Terminigans will get this as well. I was wondering when they leaked the gargoyles datasheet whether or not it might just be a specific upgrade for the gargoyles themselves. Next up there's a bunch of keyword changes. First up there's Hive Tendril, which is a new one. This one looks like it's maybe the specific Tyranid faction specific keyword now, basically one to differentiate Codex Tyranids from Gene Stealer Cults, just to differentiate rules for what's in the main Tyranid Codex so they can't apply to Gene Stealer Cult ones. Gargoyles also seem to be core as well, not really too surprising for a swarm of little bogs that the big bogs will want to command, and they've also picked up one called Endless Multitude, which I feel is quite likely to apply to a lot of the Tyranid swarms, I have a feeling that some stratagems might key off that. Maybe some buffs and abilities that these swarms get that the bigger bogs and more elite infantry can't access. Finally, and perhaps most interestingly, they've also got an ability called Swarming Masses listed here. A small but interesting little technical change to the fight phase, where it sounds like as well as being an engagement range, any models can also fight if they're within 2.5 inches as well. Which at first glance I thought sounded quite good, as it sounded sensible that Games Workshop might want them to be able to fight in 3 ranks, so they're not just getting in each other's way while they're swarming the enemy but on reading through a bit more closely, it doesn't appear that that's the case. It sounds like this could be kind of niche to be honest, for the bugs that are around the edges of the swarm perhaps that you can't quite get within half an inch of half an inch, or perhaps for some fairly specific encounters like fighting over barricades, where sometimes the second rank of models wouldn't be able to attack. It looks like a small but helpful rule, but seeing as it does seem a little bit trivial to me, I kind of wondered why they included it if that's all it's going to be. Finally, in just a couple of other changes, their power level appears to have increased from 3 to 4, 
probably to account for the fact that they're getting much better guns and also get objectives secured, both of which are great buffs. Maybe they might stay 7 points, maybe they might rise to 8, and also the maximum brood size has decreased a little bit. You can only take up to 20 gargoyles in a brood now. You used to be able to take up to 30. Probably not the biggest deal, that one, to be honest, as they're troops now, you're going to be able to spam them to your heart's content, and you could take far more of them in total than you could before. Overall, though, it seems to look pretty positive for gargoyles. Seem like a reasonable choice for jumping onto an objective, and maybe surprising certain targets with a flurry of flesh borer fire. Next up, we have the Tyranid Warriors, which we did know quite a few changes to already, as per the packaging data sheets. They are remaining troops at the same power level, 4 for 3 models. They've got those decent stat line increases, Strength and Toughness 5 and Ballistic Skill 3 Plus are all really helpful. And then they've got an absolute raft of weapon profile buffs. Bone Sword's going to damage 2, Scything Talons AP-1, Barb Stranglers plus 1 Strength, Death Spitters AP-2, Devourers getting 5 shots rather than 3, Spine Fist getting 2 Strength 5 shots, and Rending Claws getting AP-1 and plus 1 Strength. A few new reveals from this list though are that the Lash Whip is going to allow you to re-roll hit rolls of 1, Previously, it used to be a fights on death mechanic, and it's also different to the Genius of the Cult Codex, where it just allows four re-rolls of hits in general. If Bone Sword and Lash Whip cost the exact same as Bone Sword and Bone Sword, it sounds like the double Bone Swords are going to be the way to go, as they give you plus one attack just for free. Otherwise, even getting a single set of Scything Talons now gives you an extra attack, but you don't get the re-roll ones to hit anymore. And the Flesh Hooks went from being a minor assault type weapon to surprisingly being a bit more of a grappling hook type upgrade now allowing the Tyranid Warriors to ignore vertical movement, so could basically ping themselves to the top of buildings if they wanted to. I kind of feel that that's a bit of a weird change just by how they're modelled on the Warrior kit. They definitely look like a lot more things that are expected to shoot out and try and snare the enemy, as opposed to actually try and get them around the battlefield, but I suppose it at least makes them an interesting upgrade if they're cheap enough. You can, in theory, take them, Toxin Sacks and Adrenal Glands if you want to. It's really going to come down to cost for any of these, though, the Toxin Sacks now give you 6s to hit auto wound in melee. Previously it was 6s to wound give you plus 1 damage. And Adrenal Glands now give you plus 1 to your movement and strength characteristics. Previously they were plus 1 to advance and charge. Toxin Sacks look like they could be handy on most of the upgrades to be honest. Particularly maybe the low strength ones like Scything Talons. Adrenal Glands maybe look like they could be interesting on Bone Swords. As they get you up to a mighty strength of 8. Good enough to tangle with virtually anything in the game. Otherwise, they have just about all the keywords that you'd expect. They still have Synapse, which I do wonder if they might rework in a couple of ways in the new codex. I wouldn't be too surprised if it gave you an Invul save or something. And finally, you can include a Tyranid Prime Slotless if you include a Warrior Squad in your detachment. Quite a nice little bonus, that one. The Tyranid HQ slot can have some fierce competition. Finally, speaking of which, we do have the datasheet for the Tyranid Prime himself. In general, his stat line hasn't really changed as much as the Warrior's, he was already strength and toughness 5, but he did gain a 2 plus ballistic skill. It looks like he's potentially going to be a lot more of a ranged threat than he was before. Previously, he could only take the more basic bio cannons. Now he can take some more advanced options like the Venom Cannon and Barb Strangler, both of which are really quite hard hitting at range, particularly if you're hitting on a 2 plus. I feel like those could be popular choices if they aren't too expensive. His innate buffing ability appears to have changed a bit. It's now called Alpha Warrior, and apparently you can make one unit within synaptic link range Reroll wound rolls of 1. If synaptic links and things stay the same as they were in that Warzone Octarius book, then that could potentially mean he could broadcast it through several other bogs to get to whichever bog you need in the army. But I guess we'll have to wait and see if they've changed link rules like that. That buff might be a little bit more flexible, as previously he could only give warriors plus 1 to hit, but it will now be locked to core units, which I'm sure is going to exclude most of the bigger bogs. Finally, I think you'll really enjoy the warrior war gear changes, particularly the big buff to Bone Swords being a Strength 7 and Damage 2. Previously, he just felt like a very weird HQ choice with little to no melee threat of his own, so it'll be quite nice to know that he can actually hold his own in combat somewhat now, and at the very least dispatch a Space Marine or two. 5 Strength 7 Damage 2 attacks are going to be felt by something. Overall, quite a bunch of interesting stuff for the Tyranids there. The Warrior and Prime changes we did know quite a bit of already, but it's quite good fun to see their upgrades and abilities. I'd say perhaps the biggest and most interesting change is that gargoyles are confirmed to being troops. That could definitely alter the way that a lot of people build lists. I look forward to hearing your thoughts down in the comments below. What do you make of these changes? Most of this is looking like very good news for the Tyranids in Ds. If you've enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, where we'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming, including any other news of the new Tyranid Codex that we get as we get it. 
I'm looking forward to reviewing the book in full once it comes out. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page, which you can find down in the video description below. Making all these videos does take a fair amount of time and effort, and if you are enjoying regularly, any support is enormously appreciated. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some really big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.